good morning students in today's video we are going to discuss about chapter 10 friction in today's video we will be discussing about the definition of friction as well as the factors affecting friction let me share my slide with you this is chapter 10 friction okay students uh, pick up your shoes and uh, you whenever you observe your outer sole of the shoe you find some grooves in it clear and those grooves worn out with the passage of time when we use our shoes. Why these grooves are there? For what? Basically, these grooves help to maintain the grip while running or walking and help to save us from slipping. Clear? So, there is a force which is named as friction. It is defined as the force that opposes the motion of an object. And here I would like to tell you that this force always act in the direction opposite to that of the motion. And it also tend to prevent a stationary object from moving. Whenever an object is stationary, it cannot move just because of the force of friction. For example, if you want to, uh, if you look at the sofa set, it is stationary. It will not move because there is a friction. You have to apply some force to move this. Another uh, aspect, for example, there is one another example. Rub your palms and touch your cheeks. Do you feel warmth uh, of your hands uh, on your cheeks? Yes. Why this is so? Because the friction caused by rubbing your hands together produces heat. So here we conclude that friction always opposes motion and friction produces heat. These are two properties of friction force of friction. Friction always opposes the motion and friction produces heat. We can conclude, we can define friction as the force that opposes the motion of an object. Now the next point is, what are the factors affecting friction? What are the basic things which affect friction? The very first thing is friction is caused by irregularities on the two surfaces in contact. Friction is actually affected by the irregularities of two surfaces in contact. If the surface is smooth, the friction is less. If the surface is rough, the friction is more. Let us understand this with this video. Here's a cube that's placed on the table. We know that if we are pushing the cube in this direction, then the force of friction will act in the opposite direction. If we apply a force along the left, then the force of friction will act towards the right and vice versa. The force of friction will always oppose the applied force. What are the factors that affect the friction? Let me give you three situations and then you tell me what it depends on. The first situation is when an object with a smooth surface is moving on a surface which is very smooth. Second, in which the object has a smooth surface and the surface on which it moves is rough. Or the object has a rough surface and the surface on which it moves is smooth. And in the third case, the surface of the object as well as the surface of the table is rough. In which situation do you think will the force of friction be the highest? Intuitively, you will tell me that in the third case, the force of friction will be higher than these two cases. And in which situation will the force of friction be the lowest? It will be the first case as both the surfaces are very smooth. Though there will be friction here, it will be lesser than that in the other two cases. If we just look at these three situations, we can say that the force of friction increases as we go towards the right. So, can you tell me the first factor on which the force of friction depends? Yes, it depends on the nature of the surface on which the object moves and the nature of the surface of the object. Yes, it depends on the smoothness or the roughness of the two surfaces which are in contact with each other. If you want to find out if this is true, here's what you can do at home. Create an inclined slope on a table like this and mark a point somewhere on it. Now from this point, let a small cylindrical shaped object move down. You will see that it reaches a particular point and then stops. Next, place sandpaper right under the slope and leave the object from the same point as before. What do you notice? 
you will see that the distance covered by the object is lesser in the second case. And you probably know why. The surface on which the object rolled was rougher in the second case. And clearly, the force of friction was more. Why is friction caused though? It is caused due to the irregularities on the two surfaces in contact. What do I mean by irregularities? Now, even though the table looks smooth, if we zoom into the surface, we will see the surface irregularities. Even the surface of the object has irregularities. Though they are minor, they still exist. Now, the irregularities on the surfaces lock into one another. So whenever we have to move an object, we need to overcome the irregularities. But why is the friction higher on rough surfaces? It's because rougher the surfaces, more will be the irregularities. And if the irregularities are more, then more force will be required to overcome them. So the first factor affecting the friction is the nature of surfaces. Is there any other factor you can think of? Let's say there are two bricks on a table. One weighs two kilograms and the other weighs five kilograms. Now I apply equal force on them towards the right. Which brick do you think will go further? Remember that they are both kept on the same surface and the surfaces of the bricks are also the same. On applying the same amount of force, you will notice that the lighter brick covered more distance than the heavier one. What does this tell us? It tells us that the friction also depends on the force with which the two surfaces are pressed together. If the two surfaces are pressed harder, the friction will be more. Why is that? Because of the second brick's greater weight, it presses on the table with greater force. Since its surface and the table surface are pressed together harder, the interlocking between the irregularities is more. And this results in more friction. So mainly, there are two things on which the force of friction depends. The nature of both surfaces and the force with which the two surfaces are pressed together. So, what we have concluded from this video that the force of friction depends upon nature of the surface in contact, smooth surface or rougher surfaces and mass of the object in contact. So uh, in the next video, we will be concluding, we will be including the types of friction, static, sliding and rolling. So we will meet again. Till then, have a nice day.